This is the first video in a short series of videos about working with JSON data in SQL Server. In this video, I'm going to talk about the for JSON path uh, clause, which is used in a select statement to convert data into JSON objects. So I'm working with the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse 2019 database, which is freely available online. You can download it and use it if you want to. And I'm just going to show you how this clause works through a few examples. So first, let's take a look at some data in the customer dimension. By the way, I'm using Visual Studio Code because it has nice uh, JSON formatting options. So this is the customer dimension, the first five records. I've got a customer key. I've got first name, middle name, last name. Uh, a few things about birth date, gender, children, and so on. There's English, Spanish, and French for a couple of attributes here. There's education and occupation. Now in a JSON object, you would perhaps expect those to be nested under a single education node with uh, an education element with uh, an English node, a Spanish node, and a French node. And that's exactly what we can do uh, with for JSON path in SQL Server. So that's the data. Uh, and the first example, you can see that I've created this query from the customer dimension. And what we do is we use this uh, dot notation. Now I put name.first, name.middle, and name.last. Uh, and I've done the same for education and the same for occupation. And what that will do is it will create uh, nested elements of name, education, and occupation with these items underneath. You can use double quotes, you can use single quotes, or you can use square brackets. Uh, it doesn't matter much. So let's have a look at what that, let's see what that looks like. So when we run that, it creates a single JSON object, which doesn't look very good. The reason why I'm using Visual Studio Code is that I can click on this and it will show me the nicely formatted JSON data. So you can see um, I have for each customer row, a JSON object, which represents that customer. And I've got nested name, first, middle, and last, education, English, Spanish, and French, and the same for occupation. So it's really that simple. You just write your query using the dot notation where you want, and you put for JSON path at the end of the query. And it's that simple. So just to show you that it does work with the square brackets as well, So that returns the same data. Okay, that's simple enough. So a few things I explored, I, I wondered whether I could insert the result of that query into a table by using the select into format. It turns out that doesn't work. Oh, it's trying, okay. So it gives me the error for JSON clause not allowed in the select into statement. Okay, well, that's not very convenient. Um, I, I wondered then if I could create a table first and then insert the query into the table, but actually it turns out that doesn't work either. So if I try to run this, the full JSON clause is not allowed in an insert statement. So <laughs> hitting a few dead ends here, but not to be deterred, uh, I realized, or at least I tried, uh, doing it inside a, an, a CTE. So I've taken my query and I've put it inside a common table expression called customer JSON. Now, a for JSON path query creates a single column. And so I needed to give that column an alias of customers because if I try it without that, it says you must give an alias to the column. Um, and it turns out this does work. So if I execute this, which is creating, dropping, creating the table and then using the CTE to insert into the temp table. You can see one row affected and I can now select from that temp table and get the data. But you can see it has produced the result. But one issue that I found, or whether this is to do with Visual Studio Code or not, um, is that after inserting into a table, if I'm not actually using the for JSON path to produce the output, um, the pretty printing doesn't work. So I'm not going to dig into why that is. Um, 
but it doesn't and that's what I found maybe there's some setting somewhere so that's uh, that's a way to get JSON a JSON formatted version of an existing table into another table so create your temp table use a CTE and an insert from that CTE into your temp table and then you can select and do what you want with the result maybe export it whatever um, so one other thing we can do with for JSON path is add a root node. So what we do is we put a comma and then the word root and then in parentheses we have a name for the root node. And I'll show you what that looks like. This takes a few seconds to come up. Um, so now I have this customer's root node, which if I collapse it, there is just one of them, of course, because it's the root um, within the each of the customers okay so that's the root uh, option so you may be wondering what if you want more complex data well you can join uh, have joins in your query with for json path of course you can so let's try adding some geography data to this customer json <clears throat> the geography dimension is quite simple not many columns so we can add maybe city um, region and then we've got english spanish and french for the country so we can add those in the same way that we added occupation education and so on and i'll just show you what that looks like i've, I've put some line breaks in here to break it up a bit we've got the original customer data here uh here rather and then i've added these four with a prefix of location so it will be location city and then location country region with English, Spanish, and French within. And then I've just got a standard join here and I've still got the root. So execute that and view the JSON. And if we look at the first customer, we can see now we've got this location node. And within the location node, a location nested uh, object rather, I keep saying node, but I mean nested object. We've got a city node and we've got a country region nested object, which has English, Spanish, and French, very much in the same way that we did for occupation and education. Now, of course, if we wanted to, we could structure this all differently and have customers, customer key, name, and then English attributes, Spanish attributes, French attributes, each as nested objects. But of course, that's entirely up to you and doesn't really serve the purpose of this tutorial to go into that detail. So that's adding a join, that's one join, um, which is quite interesting. We now start to get more complex data. So let's try adding some sales territory data because the geography uh, dimension does have a sales territory key. Sales territory is even more simple than geography. It just has a few fields. Um, we've got region here and then we've got country, uh, but we've already got country in the geography, in the location rather. So we're gonna add region and sales territory group and then this is sales territory image, which I'm sure would be very useful for uh, a BI tool where you want to show um, the map of, or the location of the sales territory on a map. So let's finish creating our JSON object by adding some details about the sales territory into the location object. So I've added region as location.salesterritory.region and then group as group and image as image. And you can see the join is just a standard SQL join. And let's run that and see what it looks like. Okay, great. So now we've got our location. Uh, let's just collapse these. So this is the first guy. Let's get rid of those. Let's collapse those. This is the first guy, customer key uh, 11,000 and his location is in Rockhampton and we've got options of English, Spanish and French for the region and then we've got some information about the sales territory. We've got Australia, Pacific and presumably an image of um, the, the boundaries of the sales territory. And that's for JSON path in SQL Server.